system. Maybe I should turn off one light and then um, talk about circulatory system. Uh, the blood goes, important thing that you should know, blood from artery, um, right here. The blood from uh, aorta, let's say, from aorta goes to arteries, from arteries goes to arterioles, from arterioles to capillary, from capillary to uh, venules, from venules to veins, from veins, it goes to inferior vena cava and upper portion of the body, superior vena cava, and in the uh, uh, left side of the heart, right side of the heart, where I have. Okay, so that's something we talked about the last time. Let's go over respiratory system. Uh, this is the general anatomy of respiratory system. What happens, it is a tree, your respiratory system is a tree. Think of a tree that is upside down and stuck it down your throat. Okay, so the big uh, trunk of the tree, it is your trachea right here. You do have slide of trachea. Make sure you look at it right next to esophagus, a cross section of it. So there, I ask you to identify different structures in there in your uh, lab handout. At the end of your bronchioles, you have these like a grape, uh, but actually they're like, they're like a leaf. They function like a leaf. They look like a grape. I hope I'm making some sense. Uh, they function like a leaf, exchange of gases. You study that in bio one. And then um, they look like a ball uh, at the end of the, uh, your bronchioles. And of course, um, your bronchioles are surrounded by smooth muscle. So people who have asthma, uh, the smooth muscle for unknown reason, after all these years, uh, their theories, uh, they contract and the person is short, uh, short of the breath. Okay, of course you have two lungs. Uh, the right lung has three lobes. The left lung has two lobes. Left lung has two lobes because of what? Heart, okay. Here is <clears throat> pulmonary ven ventilation. What happens inside of inside of your lungs in a um, the atmospheric pressure is usually 760, and um, uh, during inspiration here, we go. <coughs> inspiration during inspiration, what happens? The atmospheric pressure is 760, higher than the pressure in the lungs. The pressure in the lungs is 758 just by two uh, millimeter of mercury, not much. And then what happens, the air rushes in. This is during when you are not meditating. This is during when you are not meditating. During meditation is a different story, okay? So then the diaphragm goes down, the uh, lungs expand, the alveoli becomes full of oxygen, so on and so forth. Then what if the costal muscles moves out, the muscles between your ribs, and then the pressure inside of the lungs become greater during expiration. Okay, so becomes 762. Atmospheric pressure is 760, yeah, 760. So the air is pushed out, and that's what exhalation, expiration, <coughs> exhalation occurs. So inhalation and exhalation. The difference of atmospheric pressure, of course, we're talking about when you're not thinking about, you're not thinking about your respiration at night when you sleep or during Super Bowl of your watch. It automatically happens for you. Okay, then what happens, the difference of the pressure, they call it P, carbon dioxide, that small P, lowercase p, is uh, for partial pressure because you have other, uh, you have a mixture of gases in the lungs, but the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is 40, partial pressure of oxygen is greater, is 105. So all of that oxygen goes from here into your arteries. Your arteries take that oxygen and pump it to the rest of the body. These are your tissues that I was talking about, interstitial fluid. Yeah, these are the tissues like liver cells, brain cells, what have you. And then what happens at, t at uh, tissue level, um, the oxygen diffuses into the tissue for cellular respiration. You need oxygen, you remember that from bio one. And then uh, the carbon dioxide that is produced by breaking down glucose molecule, amino acid, fat, whatever breaks down, it goes into 
the, uh, of course, capillaries, and from capillaries it goes to the venules, from venules to the vein, and into the uh, inferior vena cava. So, look, let's look at it. The pressure of carbon dioxide in the vein, in the blue portion of your blood, is uh, 45. Here it is 40. Oxygen, lower amount in the vein. In the vein part is 40. Here in the artery portion is 105. Higher. I'm going to make it some sense. Where did that oxygen go? It went to the tissues of your body. Okay, so that's another thing that uh, you should pay attention. You study it. It's not much. I will not ask you for numbers, but you should know the difference of the pressure. How if you can, if, if it's an essay question, you can write down the numbers if you want. Of course, I'm hoping you write down the correct numbers. And that's, that's all I have to say about the respiratory system. Let's move on and go to the uh, urinary system. Urinary system, it gets rid of the excess, um, it filters uh, the plasma portion of your blood. Urinary system, but what filters your solid portion of your blood? You remember if I take your blood, put it in a test tube, you have the solid portion on the bottom, the liquid portion on top. So this is the liquid portion. You're going to talk about liquid portion that's going to be filtered. The solid portion, who filters the solid portion of your blood? Liver. Liver. Liver, all of the solid of your blood, liver will get rid of. That's why I do not recommend eating liver. You don't eat it. If you can, if you have to. They put a gun on your head, eat your liver. I would eat it. I would eat it raw. If they make me. Okay. But anyhow. So diaphragm is right here. Yeah, well, that, uh, two kidneys. You have two kidneys. Um, then you have, what else is in this diaphragm? You have renal vein, renal artery, we talked about that. I want to talk about uh, ureter, uh, ureter, then you have bladder, and urethra. The slides you have on transitional, make sure you look at all of your slides right today. All of those 30 slides, view them. Uh, transitional epithelial tissue are, uh, the slides that we have is in your, your ureter. The slides of ureters, uh, it could be bladder, some of the slides could be bladder, and, and of course urethra is uh, in this case right there. Um, urethra, uh, same thing, I'm beating the dead horse uh, quickly. Uh, these are the three layers of uh, ureters. You have mucosa layer, which is transitional epithelial tissue, muscularis layer, and fibrosa layer of your, of your uh, ureters. Okay, here is the kidney, uh, the gross anatomy of it. The outer layer of kidney right here is the cortex layer of kidney. When you go inward, after cortex, anything inward is your uh, medulla layer of uh, kidney. Then you do have uh, minor calyxes, and they come to major calyx, and major calyx dump it into the uh, renal pelvis, from renal pelvis into the ureter, from ureter to bladder, from bladder to urethra. Okay, so those are uh, some of the things. Here, there is a lot on this picture, but quickly, let's talk about male and female. Uh, why urinary infection is more common in females than male? Because urethra, urethra is shorter in female than male. The bacteria has to travel a shorter distance in female, and they reach bladder, and they reach kidney, God forbid, I hope it doesn't go to the kidney, and they cause, uh, they call it urinary infection. In case of male, uh, urethra is longer, so the bacteria have to travel longer distance, and usually, uh, it happens, not male, do not get them, I'm, saying, I'm talking about the incidents, the cases of uh, the infection. Okay, let's go to the kidney again. Uh, renal artery brings the blood into the kidney and percolates it, and then renal vein takes the blood away from kidney. So let's talk about what happens in between. Are you guys ready for that? What happens, right, in this on the diagram you have in your textbook, blood arrives into the uh, glomerulus, uh, it, uh, renal artery branches to afferent arteriole right here, Okay, arrive, afferent arterial, easy to memorize, A, A, is that right? 
Afferent arterial blood arrives into the kidney, as I showed it to you on the uh, model, and then it percolates, the blood percolates in the glomerulus, and look, blood does not, blood does not get into the Bowman's capsule. If it does, the person, Houston, we got a problem. <laughs> right? It should not go in there. Blood should not be in the urine. If blood is in urine, we got a problem. Okay, you have to look where it is the problem. Most likely it's right here, somewhere it's happening. But anyhow, uh, so blood percolates here, the pressure is higher here than the Bowman's capsule. So small molecules seep out from glomerulus to Bowman's capsule. And then those molecules will go through proximal convoluted tubules. Do you guys see that? Why they call it proximal? Because it's proximity of glomerulus. And why they call it convoluted? Because it's twisted. You say that person is convoluted. I don't know if you've heard of that or not. That person is twisted. You know, they're not straight, shot. They're twisted. But anyhow, convoluted tubules. And then from uh, proximal convoluted tubules comes to the loop of Henle. From loop of Henle, it goes back to distal convoluted tubules. And from distal convoluted tubules to the collecting duct, and so on and so forth. On your slides, on the microscopic slides, do not worry about proximal convoluted tubule, distal convoluted tubule. It's all convoluted tubules. But you should identify, on your slide, you should identify glomerulus. And don't worry about bonus capsule. Okay, glomerulus is simple squamous epithelial tissue. The convoluted tubules is simple cuboidal epithelial tissue. I hope I'm making some sense there. So, and then, of course, it goes up. Uh, quickly on the model, we have here, I hope you all can see this, uh, uh, the iTunes uh, videos do not have the models, uh, unless I'm reviewing for the lab, but uh, right here we have the models. So here is a cortex layer. In the cortex layer of your kidney, you have a lot of <coughs> glomerulus. If you have them, sorry, I'll pick it up. It has glomerulus. Am I making some sense? It has glomerulus right here. The medulla layer has the uh, collecting duct loop of Henle. And then, of course, you have minor calyx, minor calyx, minor calyx. They dump them to, uh, they dump the, the urea into the major calyx, from major calyx to renal pelvis, from renal pelvis to ureter, and ureter out to bladder and ureter. Is there renal vein huh? or pelvis? Huh? Is there renal vein or, or renal pelvis? Renal vein is right here. Okay. And renal actually, artery is right here. Renal pelvis is right here. Okay. Which there is no blood. There, is, there should be no blood in renal pelvis. That's right. all urine. So that's but, where people get the kidney stones, right? Right. You, well, it depends where it is. Most likely in the ureters. Um, yes. It could be a variety of places. It could be in the renal pelvis too. Um, okay. But anyhow, uh, right here is a, a larger version of this. So here is a cortex, cortex shown, medulla, and loop of Henle, collecting dog, and these are glomerulus Bowman's capsule. Now, larger version of one of these, you do have them in your slides, a lot of them. Larger version of one of these is right here. That's a Bowman's capsule. This is the glomerulus right here. Oh, oh. Uh, right here. Glomerulus is right here, Bowman's capsule. So blood, uh, uh, the plasma that percolates in here, they go into the Bowman's capsule, and then when they are in the Bowman's capsule, it's called filtrate. It's not called plasma anymore. So filtrate is plasma minus all of the large molecules. All of the small molecules are in the filtrate. The large molecules, who gets rid of them? Liver. Large molecules go to liver and liver dismantle them. Small molecules, right here. Yes? Um, I've heard of getting like your kidneys removed. Can you get both of them removed? Or no. You get both of them removed, then you have to go through dialysis. But you can remove one of them. So then all your, your waste products go through one then? Right. Even in normally, normally, usually, one of your kidneys are functioning at one time, and the other one, are, the other kidney is functioning. You have, I read this, you have about a million, let's say, 
you have about a million nephron in your body, only one third of them are functional at a time. Okay, so that's pretty much what they say. So the pop, you both of them yes, you, yes. Yeah. That's what happened to those people who they have to remove. Yeah, you have to go through dialysis. Without kidney, you cannot live. Okay, so anyhow, um, right here, so blood is arriving. I hope you all can see this. Blood is arriving through afferent arterial, percolates in glomerulus, and then leaving efferent arterial. And then when I'm from efferent arterial, if you want to follow it in here, it comes to capillary, from capillary, it goes to venule, from venule goes to vein, renal vein, and out into the heart. I hope I'm making some sense. Okay, um, then you have the proximal convoluted tubule on this model, it's right here, and this is a uh, distal convoluted tubule up there on the top. What else do we have on the kidney that here? Oh, uh, a nephron, <coughs> a unit of your kidney is a nephron. A unit of your muscle is what? Sarcomere. Sarcomere is unit of your muscle, skeletal muscle. A unit of your kidney is uh, nephron. A unit of money in the United States is what? Dollar. Oh, okay. I thought this is economic class. Economics. Sorry. Okay. So anyhow, um, here it is, as I said, uh, blood comes in, percolates, and the difference of the pressure causes the small molecule seeps out and they go into the urine and out. I think I mentioned everything. Again, this is beating the dead horse. Uh, it talks about the difference of the pressure and so on and so forth. Loop of Henley and blood gets out. We already talked about that. There's another concept uh, in the kidney that you should know. just know the name for now. When we get to um, when we get to uh, clams, you will see this again that what happens in the clamps. It's called, it, it's called counter current multiplier. What will happen, the filter that goes through your proximal convoluted tubule, distal con and, this, uh, and then loop of Henle, and then distal convoluted tubules, several things happen to it. <coughs> molecules come in and leave. Molecules go out, and then they go in, out again, and they go in. There's no word that shows the molecules. <coughs> there are molecules that goes into the filtrate as well. Uh, when uh, it, the filtrate goes through this loop of Henle proximal convoluted, the concept is called counter current multiplier. Digestive system. Is there any question about urinary system? You have two kidneys, two ureters, one urethra, one bladder. Yes. It's a fairly uniform system amongst all the animals in them, right? The, there, aren't there certain rays and such that secrete your into their skin? Yeah, uh, uh, yeah when, when not the very primitive animals like jellyfish, hydra, but when you get uh, a little bit more down through the evolution, yes, it's a U shape. Yes, your text would talk about it too as well. Yeah, it's a U shape. We will talk about. Uh, 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 Proto-nephridia and metanephridia a little bit later on during the semester. Right now, I don't want to jam you with a lot of information. We'll talk about those a little bit later on. Uh, I guess when we get to digestive system, uh, you have uh, a, a couple of things about digestive system before we move on into it. These are the two terms that you should know. Absorption. And digestion. What is the difference? Does anybody want to say anything? Digestion, yes. Oh, digestion. Yeah, please. Digestion is like breaking down. Very good. You break down food. You break down food that you ingest. I'm not talking about catabolism. No, that's different than catabolism. Catabolism happens inside of the cells of the body when you break it down the molecule inside of that, at the cellular level. But here, when the food you eat, you're breaking it down by first the saliva, salivary glands, and chewing. Is that right? That's what you're doing. So it's a breakdown. And then when food breaks down, 
they get inside of the cell, when they are getting inside of the cell, it's called what? Absorption. They are absorbed by blood vessels. Or in, in some case by lacteal and lacteal. That's absorption. The food that you ate this morning, you should eat breakfast. The most important part of the day is your breakfast. Should be. Okay, so what you have a structure called epiglottis is a flap of cartilage that close your trachea. Hopefully food, food will not go through your trachea. And it goes through esophagus. Esophagus moves down, move down the food by peristalsis. Right here is peristalsis. You have two sets of muscles. You look at your slides, you will see them. You have two sets of muscles, circular muscles, go this way right here, circular muscles, rings of circular muscles. And then you have longitudinal muscles that are outside in your digestive system. That's pretty much is the norm. It's outside, longitudinal muscle. And then peristalsis is, by here is by the definition, when the inner circular muscles contract, when the inner, uh, inner circular muscles contract, the tube tightens, when the outer longitudinal muscles contract, the circular muscles relax so the tube is loose, and that's how food goes down your esophagus. And the, after esophagus, you have what? Stomach. That's what the model of stomach is. Okay, so that is, um, let's go over uh, the passage of food. All of the organs of digestive system uh, are listed here. You have salivary glands, okay, from top, and then you come through esophagus, it goes to the stomach. From stomach, food goes into the small intestine. There are three parts into the small intestine, duodenum, jejunum, ileum. Do not worry about, distinguish them on your slides. Your slides have all three parts, duodenum, jejunum, ileum. Don't worry about it, but just mention the parts that I ask you to identify them, then you have to identify. Then from the small intestine, it goes to the large intestine, and then out in the anus. There are other parts of the digestive system, we consider part of the digestive system, that food does not pass through it. They call it accessory. To me, they're really not accessory, they're vital, but they call them accessory, organs of digestive system. Like if I wear a tie, that's an accessory closing, isn't it? It's not a vital. This is what I have to have a shirt, right? If I don't, they keep me out of school. Same as you guys. You don't have pants. They ask you to leave, right? So they are not accessory. But if you don't have a tie, what do you do? You don't have a purse, nobody cares. Those are accessories. Am I making some sense? You don't have a scar, eh, it's okay. So, but the accessory organs of digestive system are starting salivary glands, food does not pass through it. Your uh, liver, right? Where is it? Right here, liver. Your gallbladder. Right, and your pancreas. Those are accessory organs which food does not, but they help. Food does not pass through them, but they help with absorption and digestion. Both absorption and digestion. Okay, and of course the uh, stomach has uh, the three parts, uh, the body, um, pyloric portion, and um, cardiac portion, but anyhow, I don't think you should worry about that. Too much. Uh, here is the intestine, uh, duodenum, duodenum, ileum, and uh, large intestine. Um, here I talked about uh, peristalsis. Let's go to um, cellular level and uh, talk about uh, absorption, digestion, <coughs> and everything else on cellular level. Here is a model of intestine. Uh, you do have a slide of it. You have two, actually two, three slides of them. The one that shows the goblet cells nice and beautifully. The other one just uh, uh, duodenum, duodenum, ileum, again, do not worry about them. So when food comes into the digestive system right here between the lumen, they call this a lumen right here, the lumen of digestive system, so that would be the lumen of digestive system. Remember, this is a ring. Imagine this in a ring all around your, 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 your intestine is a, is a tube, right? So they just took a portion of that tube, a little bit of it, and they're showing it here. All of that tube is right there. 
So they took a portion of it right here, just a little bit of it, right here, and showed you. So let's go over. So in the lumen, you have food, and food is being absorbed now. So far, they were digested all the way to the stomach. Stomach, where is the stomach? Stomach, main function of stomach is digestion. It breaks down food for you. The only thing, is one of the few things that absorb, that is absorbed in the stomach is alcohol. Alcohol is absorbed here. Nothing else. Well, a few other things are absorbed here, but alcohol is the main one that is absorbed here. If you drink alcohol on an empty stomach, you get buzz faster. Isn't that? Isn't that? Those of you who have experienced shaking, you know that. I experienced it. I experienced it too. Not a good thing. Nothing that I'm proud of. I don't do it anymore. I don't recommend it anymore because it destroys your liver. Right here. You drink. You don't have this anymore. Of course, many other things, friends, your sanity. <laughs> but uh, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so I can say, no, I mean, I never drank in my life. But anyhow, okay, let's go over through here. So food and nutrient comes into your simple columnar epithelial tissue. On top of your simple columnar epithelial tissue, right here is a cell of it, Half of this one, half of that, half of that one. This is a simple columnar epithelial tissue, right? And then on top of it, you have a structure called brush border or microvilli, microvilli or brush border, which absorbs. It's a continuation of cell membrane. It's a cell membrane that is folded back and forth, back and forth. There is no cilia in there. There is no nine plus two. You learned that in biology one. There is no nine plus two in there. But uh, those absorb glucose molecules, amino acids, and small fat, and they give them to the blood vessel. Then, the large fat molecules, they have their own process, are absorbed to lacteal system. Okay, and the lacteal system is part of your lymphatic system. So I could put a piece of tape here, what system this belongs to? Lymphatic system, not digestive system. It is found in digestive system, but it is part of lymphatic system. Okay, so uh, food and nutrients are, so here is a pancreas uh, uh, mucosa layer. All of this layer is called a mucosa layer right here. So on your model, up to here is mucosa layer. Then underneath, between the muscularis layer, is submucosa layer. And then underneath of submucosa layer is muscularis layer, which is combination of your smooth, uh, smooth, it's all, it's all smooth muscle, circular and longitudinal muscle. Circular in the inner layer, longitudinal in the outer layer of your uh, muscles. Okay, uh, here again, uh, here is simple columnar epithelial tissue. Here is the blood vessels. Here is a lacteal, and uh, here is a uh, mucosa layer. Uh, this is muscularis layer. All of your circular muscle and longitudinal muscles here between the mucosa layer uh, and uh, muscularis layer right here is a, your submucosa layer. They call it submucosa layer. Okay. Um, uh, liver. I mentioned uh, functions of liver. You should know them. There are five, six functions of liver. One of them you learn already is what? Let's go over them together because it's very important. You cannot live without your liver. You cannot live without your brain. You cannot live without your heart. But they can remove part of your lungs and you still live. Uh, if they remove part of your liver, you still live. Not all of it or big chunk of it. People who die of uh, liver cancer or they have been drinking all their life too much, uh, they have to remove a big portion of their liver and transplant liver to them. But they can remove a small portion of your liver and you still survive. Okay, but liver, uh, I consider a, a, a vital organ of your body, same as your brain, same as your heart. Okay, let's go over the functions of liver. Number one, a fil we talked about it, filter what? Filter, filter toxic material, filter large molecules. Okay, that's one. The other one makes bile. makes bile. It does not store bile. Where is bile stored? Gallbladder. So you remove your gallbladder, you should be okay. You live a normal life. 
they tell you, you do not eat too much fatty food. Because bile does what? <coughs> bile, bre uh, bile breaks down fat molecules. Okay, so that's two functions. What is the other one? <coughs> glycogen is made there. Okay, so it's a place to store glycogen. After you eat a meal, after you eat a meal full of carbohydrates, those carbohydrates are stored so you don't constantly eat like hummingbirds. They're stored in your liver and your skeletal muscle. And the name of the molecule is glycogen. Many sugar molecules come together and <clears throat> they're connected together. It's called glycogen. What else? That's three functions. What else? Uh, breaks down your uh, red and white blood cells. Your red blood cells, every 120 days, you have a new red blood cells in your body. Your skin is how long I gave you that? Two to three days, you have a new skin. The epithelial cells from your mouth to your anus, every two to three days, you have a new epithelial cells. Your blood is 120 days. Your red blood cells, of course. Your red blood cells, yes. So it breaks down red and white or just red? It, it does white blood cells too, but it, it breaks down red blood cells, and that's why red blood cells, both. It breaks both. And that's why you see your feces uh, brown. If you don't see your feces brown, then you still have a problem. Unless you eat something that has a lot of dye, or red dye, like you eat beets. If you eat a lot of beets, you all know what I'm going to talk about, beets, then your feces could be red. It's okay for a day or two. But if constantly your feces is red, or it's not brown, Houston, we've got a problem. I want to make you some sense. OK, uh, so it gets rid of red blood cells. Uh, makes blue ribbon. It's called the end product. It's called blue ribbon. What else? What else liver does? Anybody else? I said that in my uh, videos in the past. Hmm? Four or five functions of it. I guess as time goes on, I will add to them. Yes? Ken? No? Are you yes. Uh, yes, OK, thank you. We will come, we will, I guess the PowerPoints will get to it. What happens to <coughs> kidney, your kidney, uh, uh, well, let's start with liver. Your liver takes the amino acids, the protein molecules you ate. It takes the amino acids and breaks it down to carbon dioxide, carbon molecules, and ammonia. Ammonia NH3 is a very toxic material. And then ammonia is converted to urea in the liver. And liver sends the urea to where? To the kidneys. And kidneys disposal. So if you have accumulation of urea in your body, who is responsible? Kidneys. They are not disposing them. If you have accumulation of ammonia, which is more dangerous, who is responsible? Liver. liver. That's why people with liver problem, they're worried about ammonia. Okay, so ammonia is not converting it to urea. It's supposed to convert it to urea. Okay, here is uh, a gallbladder. I guess we don't get to talk about it today. I will talk about it uh, on <coughs> Thursday. On Tuesday, uh, the uh, the uh, endocrine system. Okay, gallbladder is uh, they are, they are on the model here. You should identify these structures. I'm, I'm hoping you find I find them. It's too small. I cannot show it on TV, but I will show it to you guys uh, in a person. You have a con here is a liver. All of this is liver. All of this is liver here. When a bile is made in liver, they dump it into the common hepatic duct. From common hepatic duct, gallbladder stores some of them. Some of them comes down to common bile duct. And common bile duct ends up in duodenum to break down uh, fat. Okay. So that's what the function. Making bile here, another function of liver. Did I mention that already yeah. in this book? Here is the molecules that they were talking about. Here is a large uh, molecules of carbohydrates in the brush border. There are enzymes to break them down. <coughs> Those enzymes will break down the uh, uh, 
um, for example, this is a maltose. It breaks it down to single glucose molecules. They absorb, and then they're uh, transferred to the blood vessels. The blood vessels will take them to the liver. That's another function of liver. All of the nutrients that you eat, except the large fat molecules, carbohydrates, end up into liver. And liver converts the galactose to uh, sucrose, everything else, uh, to glucose molecules. Everything is converted to glucose molecules in the liver. So you have fructose, here we go. Fructose and galactose are converted to glucose in liver. They are transported by blood vessels. Okay, uh, this is the fate of carbon. There are three hormones, uh, there are three enzymes that you should know here lactase, sucrase, and maltase. Ace at the end of the word. Ace at the end of the word, it means enzyme. But this is lactose, sucrose, maltose. These are the disaccharides, but the name of the enzymes, maybe you should mention them here on your uh, note that they are uh, lactase, sucrase, uh, maltase, so on and so on. Here is the fate of uh, large fat molecules uh, by the name of the uh, protein molecules. Uh, it's called chylomicrons. Uh, don't worry about this term. But the large fat molecules end up in the lacteal system. Uh, small and small and medium size end up into the blood vessels. That's the PowerPoint showing you the, uh, the fate of the fat. Here is that in the morning you had too much uh, glucose in your diet or lunch. Uh, then all of that glucose by help of insulin comes from your pancreas are, uh, facilit are absorbed into the muscle and liver and other cells of the body. So what does insulin do? Insulin opens up the door. They facilitate absorption of glucose into the cells of the, cell, uh, of the body. Insulin, that's, that's their job. They open up the gate from glucose molecules to get into the liver, muscles, and the rest of the cells of the body. Excess glucose, if you don't use them, turns into fat. And that's something they talked about. And then by lunchtime, what happens when you're not eating, when the level of the glucose goes down in your blood, glucagon, another hormone that is secreted from your pancreas, it goes and breaks down the glycogen. This is a glycogen right here. Many glucose molecules are attached to each other, called glycogen. And it breaks it down, uh, glucagon breaks it down to um, 